Um, the next person on the list is Matthew. Yeah! I actually have something new this week. Woo! All right. And this new, it's probably not going to be as polished. Like the rain. Thanks. I like them too. <laughs> Brody Aaron's duel with a swordsman. This will merely here for a moment, Mr. Aaron. The man in the glass dome held his head as his forearms floated above his patient's body. Each arm held a dagger pointed at the test subject's face. Simultaneously, the blades pierced his flesh and were dragged in symmetrical lines. When the dome helmeted man finished, he lifted his arms and the test subject's body, uh, blood floated out, floated out of his body. Brody screamed vi as violently. Oh, man, I screwed up already. I just write it. He screamed. Oh, actually, that was right. Never mind. I actually screamed while reading. <laughs> Brody screamed as he violently threw his blanket in the air, which landed on him. He realized that this, this was all a dream, a horrible dream for the event that changed his life back in the 30s. Brody looked at his clock to see that the time was one in the afternoon. He decided that since he was awake, he may as well start his day. Brody got dressed into his dress clothes consisting of a white dress shirt with a green tie, black pants, and a green vest under a green jacket. Upon dressing, he put on his black leather gloves and boots as well as his green and gray mask hiding his symmetrically scarred face. Brody ate his breakfast, his breakfast, cold blend cereal with two bottles of scotch. With his artificial stomach full, he picked up the, the sheathed rapier which was attached to his small olive colored shoulder cape and his revolver and left his confined apartment to do his work. Brody strolled through the city to his favorite bar where he would be given his next assignment. Brody entered the bar and pounded on the counter to get the barkeep's attention. The, the bartender turned his head and slid an envelope to Brody. He took the envelope and sat on a nearby stool to read what his job was for today. The contents of the envelope consisted of a picture of the target and half of the payment. The picture was of a portly man with a receding hairline and an unshaven face. On the other side of the photo was an address where he could be found. Brody left the bar to find the target. While waltzing his way to the man, Brody heard a voice saying, Hey, Mommy, it's the Blade Slinger. Brody turned his head in the direction of the, of the voice to see a child pointing at him. Hey, little bugger, I'm not a Blade Slinger, he yelled at the child. But you have a sword just like him and a fancy costume to boot, the child said in his defense. It was true that Brody and the Blade Slinger shared many features, but Brody found this to be an insult and stormed away to the mission at hand. Brody noticed his target checking his mail. Upon seeing the strange masked man in a dress suit, the man ran for the hill, so to speak since there were no hills. Brody continued to walk at his usual pace, waiting for the man to run out of breath. Having breath it shortly, the man fell to his knees, wheezing in a desperate struggle to collect air to keep his heart working. Brody pointed the sharp tip of his sword at the large, lazy man. Hey, look, it's the Blade Slayer, were the words heard from, from the children and even a few adults. Once more, Brody was aggravated at such an assumption, while arguing that he was not the Blade Slayer, but Brody's target escaped. Trudging back to his modest abode, he noticed more things related to the Blade Center, such as newspapers, radios, and even a loud television heard from an open window, all of which were discussing the ceremony dedicating to give the giving of the key to the city to the Blade Center. Thor's Blade Slinger wrote, swirled in Brody's head, driving him mad than he already was. This was the last straw. Brody called for a taxi and demanded to be taken to City Hall. At City Hall stood a Oh man, I forgot an A in there. At City Hall stood a man with a burgundy full face mask and a burgundy and a burgundy and navy suit. Mayor gave the hero a large key to the city. That's kind of a lame sentence. Man, I really need to reread all my crap. <laughs> the blade slinger clutched the key in his left hand and shook the hand of the mayor with his right while facing the news camera. So <laughs> Some all this at once, Brody yelled as he threw a wad of cash at the cab at the cab driver. He stormed through the crowd of reporters. I challenge you for the right, for the right to wear that costume, Brody said as he pointed a glove finger at the other masked man. I'm sorry, who are you? The blade slinger asked. I'm the guy that, who had this style on before you. I've seen you dress like this since 40. I've been dressed like this since 42. You've only been fighting crime since 53, Brody answered. So you want to challenge me for this style? That's incredibly stupid. So you're backing out? Some hero. Brody said in hopes to rile the blade slinger. Fine, I accept your challenge. What are the rules? We fight to the death. How about something less lethal? Okay, okay, the first to remove the other's mask 
when's the right to wear the mask. That sounds much better. I accept. Bernie hopped about on his toes as if he were a boxer. But unlike a boxer, he wielded a sword, which, which he pointed at the blade center. Unsheath your sword and fight me, Brody commanded. To which the, bro the blade center complied by pulling a sword from his sheath that was strapped to his back and pointed the tip at Brody's chest. Brody sprang at him while slashing downward with great here. The blade slinger gracefully moved out of the way of his blade, took hold of Brody's arm and flipped him onto his back. The crowd of reporters applauded, angry at Brody. Silence! Brody yelled. This isn't over till the mask is off. Brody looked back onto his feet and swung wildly at his opponent. The blade slinger blocked, parried, and dodged all his swings and slashed at Brody, cutting off Brody's side. The fight continued with the same outcome. Brody waved his sword like, an, like the amateur that he was, and the blade slinger avoided his mask swipes while continuing to slice Brody's suit to tatters. The Blade Center was becoming tired and he noticed that Brody was nowhere near exhaustion. He needed to end this quick and started to attack instead of merely protecting himself. He thrust his blade at the, the masked madman. Brody attempted to defend himself, but his sword was flawed out of his hand and landed harmlessly out in the street. The Blade Center grabbed Brody's mask and pulled it off, revealing Brody's symmetrically scarred bald head. The audience applauded the Blade Center's vigor, but all Brody heard was laughter and gashes hitting his face. This enraged Brody, and he drew out his knife while lunging at his victor, who was walking away from him. One member of the audience informed Blade Singer of his assailant, making him turn to face him. Brody attempted to pierce him multiple times, all of which failed, but made the Blade Slinger eat more exhausted than he already was. The Blade Slinger knocked the knife out of, the, out of his opponent's hand while Brody disarmed the Blade Slinger at the same time. Brody threw his fist at the Blade Slinger's face. Brody's nemesis could only block one of Brody's hands. And the, other, and the other clutched the blade singer's mask at the top. Brody attempted to, he attempted to tug at the mask, the mask would not come off. It won't work, my mask is attached to my undersuit, blade, the blade singer replied to Brody's confusion. This, was, this did not stop Brody from tugging at the mask, and with enough force, Brody ripped a portion of the mask off, and Brody fell to the ground from the force that was pulling. The entire crowd gasped in horror at the sight of what was revealed to the hero. The blade singer's portion of the mask that was still attached to his undersuit hid the lower portion of his face, but it revealed that the Blade Slinger was a black man. The crowd shouted at many obscene words. But the words that were yelled were, were dependent on whether or not the person in the crowd was black or white. The whites in the crowd called, called him a Negro and even worse things than that, while the blacks in the crowd called him an Uncle Tom and a race trader. The mayor took the key, the key to the city from the Blade Slinger. Shane, the, bro, the Blade Slinger, dashed away from the, the crowd while Brody picked up his own mask and walked through the crowd back to his home. While walking home, he felt how hollow his victory was. Days later, Brody found the Blade Slinger restraining an unconscious criminal. The Blade Slinger dressed differently this time, though. He didn't wear his burgundy and navy jacket, but he did wear his burgundy vest and his navy tie with a silver sword pinned on. He still wore his white dress shirt, but the sleeves were rolled up to reveal his dark skin. He wore a different mask that hit, only hid the lower portion of his face. Brody coughed to get his attention, and the man turned around. Part of the face was hit. The part of his face that was revealed showed no angry expression toward the other masked man. I uh, just wanted to apologize for tearing your mask off in public like that, Brody said as he extended his hand to the blade slinger. No need, I should have been less secretive to these people. It's my own fault for keeping that away from them, the blade slinger said as he tried to tie the unconscious criminal to a nearby light post and walked away. Brody thought about how this was not what he expected. And. All right.